thing for the design workshop. We're going to we're going to give it a minute and then we'll jump right in and get started. We're going to let people get online really fast. Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Belleville Transit Center Transit Stop Transformation Design Workshop number one. That's a mouthful, but we are so happy to have you all joining us today. I'm Kim Sella, and I'm the Executive Director of Citizens for Modern Transit. I want to thank our partners who are making this project possible, and that includes Sheila Holm with AARP in St. Louis, Ken Sharkey with the St. Clair County Transit District, and Metro Transit. Today, we're gonna to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about placemaking and what our goals are for the Belleville Transit Center. But first I wanna introduce what, who I like to call my partner in crime, Sheila Holm with AARP in St. Louis to say a few words. And then we're gonna turn it over to Jackie Knight, the lead consultant on this project with CBB. So welcome, Sheila. Thanks, Kim, and um, echoing some of Kim's comments. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this input session. It really is important to be to get your uh, feedback and input on what would make this transit stop even better than what it is today. So um, this is a fun journey. This is number three for us. So we're very excited to um, have you join us on it. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jackie now. Jackie, before you get started, I'd like to introduce Ken Sharkey, who is our partner on the ground in St. Clair County. And Ken, if you wanted to say a few words about the Belleville Station. Um. You know, I just appreciate the work that's been done at Emerson Park. Um, <clears throat> it really came out to be a much, much larger project and a much more successful project than I ever envisioned. And I think a lot of it had to do with the partners that we aligned ourselves with. And we had the terrific public input into the final design. So I think that all made the difference. And I do believe we'll be able to repeat that here in Belleville. Uh, maybe come up with a little bit of differences, make it more personalized to Belleville in the area. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know working with all the parties involved. Thanks, Ken. All right, Jackie, we're turning it over to you. All right, thank you, everybody, um, and again, thank you for joining your lunch, joining us during your lunch hour today. Um, we're excited to talk about this Belleville Transit Center transformation and um, the project that we're just undergoing right now. So today we will, um, we already did introductions. We're going to give the project background and the history. We'll talk about existing conditions. And then we really want to focus this conversation around the design um, and get your input on what you want to see take place at the Belleville Transit Center. All right quickly through this. So um, they already introduced themselves, but the project is a joint effort between Citizens for Modern Transit, AARP St. Louis, and the St. Clair County Transit District. My name is Jackie Knight. I'm a multimodal planner at CBB, Transportation Engineers and Planners. We're a local transportation engineering and planning firm with almost 50 years of experience in the St. Louis region. Uh, my specialty is focusing on all modes of transportation. So um, where our transportation infrastructure impacts everybody walking, biking, or using public transit. Um, also on this project is Mary Ann Taylor Crate from Added Dimension. They're an engagement consulting firm. I see Mary Ann's on the line. If you want to say hello, um, you have the chance to do that. If not, I can just go ahead and go into the next slide. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Taylor Crate. Um, I am the owner and principal of um, Added Dimension LLC, um, and I am responsible for community engagement um, on this particular project. I'm excited to be here and glad that you are here to be a part of the process. Thank you. All right. 
Thanks, Marianne. So uh, both CBB and Added Dimension were engaged in the Emerson Park transit transformation. And so we're so excited to continue working with the partners on this project. Just some general meeting notes. We are recording this meeting um, so that we have the option to play it online later. The CMT website is listed at the bottom of the page. There's a lot of information about this project on that website. Um, and then if you have any questions that you think of while we're recording, please go ahead and type them in the Q&A box. Um, and we're going to have time for questions and answers at the end of this session. And any questions that we don't have a chance to get to during the session, we will be able to follow up with via email. Um, so if you have any friends or family, um, coworkers, anyone that was not able to attend the meeting today, don't worry. We will be out at the transit stop on Friday, getting some more input on the design. Um, and so we look forward to continuing to connect with people at that time. And we were out there um, yesterday as well. All right, so a little bit about the project. Um, this is the Metrolink system, system-wide for Missouri and Illinois, just to give you an overview of where the Belleville Transit Center fits in and the um, location within the public transportation Metrolink system. This is the Belleville stop right here, circled in yellow. Um, so close proximity to um, the Missouri side, maybe anything big that's happening in downtown St. Louis, but um, some also good, good proximity um, within the Metro East community over here. Just within the St. Louis region, again, here's the Belleville Transit Stop circle where you can see downtown St. Louis, St. Charles County, um, Metro East over here, and just to give you some context as to where the Belleville Transit Stop is located within the greater St. Louis uh, metropolitan area. So what are we trying to do at this stop? One of the first things that we're thinking about is placemaking. And before we get into the design conversation, we wanna talk a little bit about what placemaking is and why it's important within our communities. Placemaking is this idea that we are really bu building our communities around public spaces. Um, you know, We can really reinvent and reimagine public spaces as the heart of our community, especially when it comes to public spaces that, that are transportation infrastructure. Um, these public spaces are a huge part of our built environment. And so how can we make them more friendly for people? Um, it's looking at creative patterns of use that focus on the cultural identity of a place and bringing those, those, um, that cultural identity to life for people to enjoy in everyday spaces. Project for Public Spaces is a really great organization that talks about placemaking within our communities and they have four rules um, about what makes a great place. It's places that are accessible, um, places that are well, that are comfortable, places that attract people, and places that are social environments. So these are all principles that we're considering in this Belleville Transit Stop Transformation Project. Another thing that we want to think about is play spaces, um, and play spaces really focus on the unlimited opportunities that exist for children to enjoy their community. Um, it's this idea that there's social, emotional, and physical benefits that come along with play. And how can we transform our everyday spaces into play spaces? It's thinking about play deserts and where children may not have access to playgrounds or parks. And how can we turn what might seem like an everyday routine part of their commute at a transit stop into a space that is exciting and something that is lively. Here's some examples of what that might look like. Um, you know, something that's interactive, whether that be um, an item like this keyboard right here or, you know, this ground paint. And then, you know, this is something very simple that I always like to show when I talk about this idea is something built into the concrete that just shows, you know, how to do the cha-cha. Um, very, very simple elements that we can look at, including in our built environment that really change the way children um, and all people experience their public spaces. So the history of the project and how we got to where we are today in Belleville. As Sheila mentioned, this is the, um, the third project that AARP and Citizens for Modern Transit are, going, are undertaking together. The first project was in Maplewood, Missouri. 
You can see the images here of Maplewood before. You have a bus shelter. Sure, you have the, the shelter and you have the trash cans and the benches. And so it seems relatively comfortable for a place to sit and wait for the bus, certainly better than some stops that only have a sign. But there's really an opportunity to make this space something more, especially with this small pocket park area that exists behind this stop. For those not familiar with Maplewood, it's an inner ring suburb just outside of St. Louis city limits. Manchester Road is a major east-west arterial on the Missouri side of the river um, for motorists traveling. And so that also makes it a popular bus route. Um, and then, so this is what the stop looked like before. And then you can see the stop over here transformed after. There's decorative components added to the bus shelter. The seat, the seat located within the stop is actually a glider. Um, so that's an added element for the seating. And then you can see the playful element on the ground with the painted hopscotch, as well as a local artist that was engaged to make these Maplewood signs that are branded and representative of the community identity in the place. Emerson Park, the project that just recently opened in August. Um, you can see this drone footage of what Emerson Park looked like before. It's a major stop that connects the St. Clair County Transit District bus lines with Madison County Transit District bus lines. Also the Metrolink into um, downtown St. Louis for a lot of employment opportunities. And you can see there was just this, this bla uh, bland space of gray concrete to work with, limited shade, bus shelters for where the bus pickups were. And you can see the Metrolink stop over here. And then this is Emerson Park after. Um, some colorful shade sails, some decorative ground paint, um, fairly large and colorful planters, child-sized stools, um, and then some unique branded benches. So you can see these projects have really been a success. And so we're excited to see what the final outcome for the Belleville project is. So what are the goals of this project? First, we wanna look at activating the space surrounding and at the transit stop. Um, we've already been out there doing transit intercept surveys. We, like I said, we did our first round of tabling on Tuesday for this um, specific design element of the project. Um, and we've been talking to transit riders about ways that we can activate the space for them as they're utilizing um, the public transportation. And then we also wanna focus on elevating the space as a multimodal hub. Um, the Metro Bike Link Trail system is, an, is a really awesome system that St. Clair County should be very proud of. Having that many miles of protected bikeway alongside light rail is a really awesome feature that we should definitely play into as we develop the design of this stop or the enhanced design of this stop. So with that, we also want to enhance the user experience for, the, for people that are waiting at the stop. And then we wanna make the station more of a part of the fabric of the Belleville community. The location of this stop to downtown Belleville is fairly easy to navigate for someone to get to. And so we wanna make sure we take that into consideration while we're working on the enhanced design. On this slide, we've included the new and updated logo for Belleville. This is something that we're looking at and um, you know, it's colorful, it's fun. And what are ways that we can potentially bring this out in the design process as well? So here's the timeline. It's a quick project. We're so excited to get you engaged today, but please be on the lookout for future opportunities to continue to be engaged because um, we, we have a quick timeline and we're excited about that. But right now we're doing our initial engagement um, and we're starting off with some, some design elements. December 8th, 9th, and 10th, we'll be having our design workshop our second round of design workshops. This will include two tabling events at the transit stop, as well as a virtual lunch and learn like what we're having today. And this will be more about getting some specific um, feedback on potential design options. In January, we'll do the final design unveiling. And then construction and anticipated opening is in May, 2022. So we have a lot going on between now and May. So here's the engagement components that we uh, anticipate doing on this project. Right now we have an online survey and that's the exact same survey that we've been out at the transit stop giving to people, understanding, trying to get some input on why, how, why people are using the transit stop, how people are using the transit stop, where they're coming from, um, where they see things that are lacking or where they see things that are um, room for opportunity. We'll have our second design workshop and design unveiling. 
Um, we're looking at ways to get the youth engaged in the project. Um, and then ways that you can participate is, you know, being available today, telling your friends and families, family about the project, coworkers, um, church members, anyone that you think would give us good insight into this effort. Um, and then attending future meetings. Marianne, do you have anything you want to add on this slide? All right. So with that, <clears throat> we will move on. And I didn't mean to click that link. Hang on. Sorry about that. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll move on to the existing commission. So just wanna make sure everyone can still see the presentation. Um, Mary, could you give me a thumbs up if you all could see the presentation? Okay, cool, thank you. All right, so what we've done so far, we've uh, been surveying writers, but we've also been analyzing the existing conditions and everything that's going on at this transit stop. As you can see, it connects the red line on the Metrolink. Um, so there's the Metrolink platform <clears throat> just on the other side of this Metro Plaza area. There's this Metro Bike Link Trail, which we'll get more into specifics of that in a few slides. Also bus service with St. Clair County Transit District. So there's a few bus shelters that look like this. Um, there's a fairly large parking lot. So this stop has the potential and maybe previously it was a you know strong park and ride um, system with the ongoing COVID nineteen pandemic and the the ongoing shift in commute patterns. Um, you know we'll see what that park and ride looks like moving forward. But again, the parking lot. Um, also, I know when we were doing our initial site investigation, it was mentioned that people would park here and take a shuttle to the Art in the Square. Um, event that happened in downtown Belleville. So thinking about how the station is utilized with special events in that respect. There's also the St. Clair County Transit District flyer that operates out of the station. Um, that's an on-demand uh, ride app that's meant for shorter trips or trips that are off of the Metro bus routes that people can utilize. This is what the existing Metro bike link wayfinding looks like. It has the logo with arrows to um, different destinations and how long it takes to get there. And then there's also this existing public art. Um, there's two of these shtick figures, I am told is what they are called um, at the stop. But this is something that we're considering in terms of how public art is already ingrained um, within the stop and the big, the art culture within the city of Belleville. Um, there's this existing building that's actually in the process of undergoing some interior renovations. The goal is to have these interior renovations complete by the time our project is constructed in May. Here you can see the buildings, the windows of the building on the outside. Inside, you can see this back wall of the building has bulletin boards with existing service information. Um, and then these are the windows looking out. So a few um, things to consider with this building. This is where seniors go pick up their um, transit passes that they can use um, on the system. There's also public restrooms already available in this building, which is definitely a perk that not all transit stations have. And then there's an existing water fountain and bottle filler station. <clears throat> But this project, this is undergoing an interior renovation. So the potential for us to utilize any of the outside art elements and bring them inside is something that we're definitely considering. The Metro Bike Link Trail, um, as discussed, this is a wonderful facility that's available in St. Clair County. And you can see the map right here of how this, the system interacts. Um, the trail follows alongside the Metro Link system. So this is a wonderful facility that St. Clair County should be extremely proud of. Um, and you can see the red circle right here where the Belleville station is. So in addition to looking at people that are commuting via public transportation or bike on this system, we also want to take into account the recreation, recreational cyclists and runners, um, rollers, people that are using the trail for fun or for leisure. Um, so this is another audience that we're gonna look to throughout this process. As mentioned, the St. Clair County Transit District Flyer is another item that operates out of the stop. 
That's an on-demand service that is meant to take people to and from their destination that is not on the existing public transportation bus lines. You can see the Belleville service area, area here in orange. Um, this is a fairly new service and it's receiving some great feedback in St. Clair County. And additionally, when we went and gave our intercept surveys, we did get a few respondents that utilize this flyer service. So we know that it is something important to the transit stop. Also, the proximity to downtown Belleville is something that we really want to try to incorporate within our design. I just very quickly did a Google Maps of how long it would take um, walking. It's about a 17 minute walk, about one mile from this stop to Belleville. But that trip becomes increasingly easy for someone to do that might be riding a bike or on a scooter. So thinking about that connection is something that's really important to us because of the strong sense of community that exists within the downtown Belleville area. Okay, so as mentioned, we have done some initial rider engagement and we thought it would be very important to share that information with you today so that you can start to see some of the feedback that we're already getting. Most of the people that we're talking with visit the stop a lot. So we're saying, thinking um, about 42% of the people that we spoke with are visiting the stop four to seven times per week. Um, and just so you're aware, we got a, about 115 survey responses. So we are getting great engagement and we're excited about that. So that makes us think people are visiting the stop frequently. And so it's, it's really an important part of their daily routine. And so how can we enhance the space for them? Most of the people that are visiting the stop are visiting it to use the public transportation services that exist, uh, about 87%. But 13% of the people that we talked to are also just there to utilize the Metro Bike Link Trail. We did go out there during the weekdays, during what you would perceive as your typical commute times. But then we also sent a team of people out there on Saturday, actually last Saturday when it was really nice outside, so that we could try to understand how many people are utilizing the space for recreation. Most of the people are getting to the stop riding the Metro bus, um, but a similar amount of people are using Metrolink. And then um, for almost 60% of the respondents that we talked to, public transportation is their primary way of traveling. So again, that signifies to our design team, this is an important part of people's daily routine and it's a space that's, that's important to them and it's one that we really wanna enhance and turn into a community asset. Most of the people that we talked to described the station as comfortable, secure, easy to navigate, um, you know, didn't really talk about things that they thought it lacked too much, but what people wanted to see. People wanted to see more seating. We heard that a lot. Um, you know, the only benches that exist are under the shelters or on the Metrolink platform. 15% um, of people commented that they had other ideas, which those ideas include plants, um, convenience store, food options phone charging stations, those are probably the top three that we saw over and over again. Um, other than that, people were interested in wall murals, shade, enhanced public art, and decorative bus shelters. And then the elements um, you can see listed on there were also included in the survey. When we get into the design components next, we're gonna go through examples of what all of this can look like. Um, but this is the feedback that we were hearing from people. So with that, I think we'll just go ahead and move straight into the design components. All right, so seating is the first thing that we wanna talk about with the transit stop and ways that we can enhance the existing stop and make it um, more fun, more vibrant, more lively. So seating is one way that we can do that. It's a functional element that provides spaces for people to sit, obviously, but then there's ways to make it fun. Um, you can see this, this big bus sculpture right here. This is actually a bench that's a glider. Stadium seating, you know, if it was outside of a stadium is something that's fun. Um, and then this is like a decorative wood bench that I actually was able to snap a photo of in Chicago. So lots of different ways to look at seating. A few more examples, um, you know, this is a fun circular element that the person can lounge in. Again, some more wood, um, fun creative elements. And then these are actually little like circular stools that spin around. So there's a lot of seating options out there beyond what we would think of as traditional um, benches or what exists today. Public art. Um, 
public art is a way is one really important way to bring in the cultural identity of a place and to also play on um, what the community wants to see at the stop. You can do this through murals, as you see here, various sculptures, um, you know, riding along a fence. And then these, these um, little Indian statues are from Wichita, Kansas. Um, they have a really big, it's called the Keeper of the Plains statue that's a prominent place that people in Wichita, Kansas go to visit. And so what they did is they put these little miniature Keeper of, Plain, Keeper of the Plains statues all throughout their community. Um, so they're, they're really great ways to brand a space. Other elements of public art include ground paint, decorative elements on fencing that may surround the transit stop, again, wall murals, and then these bus shelter wraps, um, similar to what was done in Maplewood. Sound is another element that we can bring into the final design, whether it be playful sound, like these options right here, um, where you know people can actually go and use, use the little drum hammer to, to make the sound, or whether that be piped in music, like what was done at Emerson Park. Emerson Park has jazz music being piped in. And we actually did hear from quite a few people that we talked to during the intercept surveys that the jazz music was something that they wanted to see or some sort of sound brought in at Belleville. Shade. So um, what are different ways that we can look at incorporating shade? Is it you know, more colorful elements through shade sales like this? Any natural elements that we can do through trees or greenery? Um, and then just another play on the shade sales with a more artistic um, design. Lighting is another way that we can look at enhancing the space um, at the Belleville Transit Sub, whether that be string lighting um, that exists like in this picture, also they have it in downtown Belleville, lighting that's projected on a space, or whether that be um, some more so decorative bulb lighting. A few more examples of lighting actually include incorporating lighting within some sort of sign branding, like pictured here from Toronto. And then this is an image from Boston. Um, this is actually a seasonal display, but maybe doing something more, temp more permanent like this um, with a structure with string lighting as an element as well. Also incorporating landscaping and greenery, um, whether that be through planter boxes, whether that be, you know, physically planted within the ground where there might be opportunities, or whether that be placed on some sort of statue or um, sculpture, similar to what you see here with the flowers and the peace sign. There's also the option to do planters. Picture here are planters that we did at Emerson Park. These fleur-de-lis planters you'll find all throughout the city of St. Louis, bringing in that fleur-de-lis um, brand from the city's flag. And then this is in City Garden in downtown. So you can see the nice use of landscaping um, along the linear park with the arch in the background, it just does a really great job of making it feel like a comfortable place for people. Wayfinding and signage is another way that you can brand a space while also making it more user-friendly for people. Um, so, you know, using wayfinding and signage as a sculpture or something along a fence like you see here, but then you can also do some more decorative elements when it comes to um, how people find where they're going, whether that be on the Metro bike link uh, signage or the, the public transportation signage. Also, um, you know, talking about the rich history of a place, this is from the Garden District in New Orleans, so you can do more interpretive signage where people can learn about things. Um, that would be extremely popular along the Metro Bike Link Trail for people that are biking, um, but then also branding a space or, um, you know, any initiatives that you have going on. Okay, and then um, unique station branding is another component. So the Emerson Park benches that we have that were installed at Emerson Park, um, that was something that we heard early on in that project was that people wanted to brand the space. You can also do that in bike racks or through some decorative signage pictured here, like what's in the Grove in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and then paint is another component, whether that be ground paint, like you see in these two photos, whether that be wall murals, this is a mural from my old neighborhood actually, whether that be small signs that are put up. Um, this is a community in North St. Louis County that has 
installed a series of about eight of these signs in a little pocket park, um, or again, wall paint like you see here at this underpass. <clears throat> and then playful elements. So um, thinking about ways to turn the transit stop into a playful space for people. Um, it could be something as simple as putting a basketball hoop over a trash can, um, the hopscotch paint that you see here in Maplewood, and then at Emerson Park, this selfie wall was installed so that people could pose in front of it, take a picture, you know, pretend like they're playing the saxophone. <clears throat> a lot of opportunities there as long as you use your imagination. So with that description of the different design elements that we're thinking about, I think we wanted to go ahead and get into a visual preference survey where we can actually get you all to decide on what you would like to see take place at the transit stop. So um, we'll just move right into it. We have 10 categories that will be outlined in each category. We have a set of three to four options. And so what we want you to do is vote on the option that resonates with you the most, something that you would like to see at the Belleville stop. Okay. So I think I can go ahead and start the poll. Okay, so can you guys see the poll? No. no. Okay. Um, Mallory, I might need you to help me with this because it's not letting me launch. I just hit the poll button. Can you see the poll now? No. Oh, now okay, we now. can't. Perfect. Okay, so the seat, so I'm going to go through this. So seating. So can you all go ahead and vote on option one, which is this wood bench? And again, you're just kind of like, when you look at the picture, what is the one that resonates with you the most that you would want to see? Don't have to think about it too much. Um, just, you know, this is what I like. And so we're just gonna use these basic results as we start thinking about the initial design components. Okay, I don't see any votes coming in yet. So I'm hoping um, if you're having problems, maybe put it in the chat. Jackie, you won't see the results until we answer all 10 questions and then hit oh. submit. Okay, so I'm just gonna time, time this myself um, with the slides. So I'm gonna keep this, go ahead. Jackie, Kim. you might wanna explain to people how actually to vote. Um, okay, so yeah, so if option one is what you're interested in, then on your polling, um, your poll, you should pick option one. Is there, is that, I don't think I can see what you guys can see. You just click in the circle um, next to the option that you prefer. And then you'll need to scroll down on the poll to see the following questions. As Jackie indicated, there are 10. Okay, so can everybody see the slide? The uh, seating slide? Yes. 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 Okay. So I'm going to give that slide 15 more seconds, and then I'm going to move on to our public art slide, which is question two. Okay. So public art. We'll stick on this slide for a minute, but on this slide, we have three, uh, three options, um, more of like a sculpture option. This is something about, you know, treatment on windows. There's a lot of opportunity to do that in Belleville. Um, also a mural um, that could be thinking about a, a public art on any sort of vertical element, um, walls, you know, the me maybe Metrolink platform. I don't know. It's we have a lot of creative options as we move through this process. So, um, okay. yeah. Ms. Stoney, I the only request I have from the whole group is think about maintenance. I love the wood part, the, the benches, the one on the last screen. 
I think that's a nice look, but you know, what's that for maintenance? Because it's you know, you got I'm looking for something that's more rigid that all I can do is if I have to paint it or whatever. Um, the metal benches, all that is really nice. It's just I like the wood look, but it's still that's something you gotta consider that's maintenance. You have a little overhang cover over there. Yeah. But that's that's all I have to say about that. Thanks. Thank you, Tony. Um, so that's Tony, our our uh, our expert from St. Clair County Transit District, who's going to help coordinate the construction. And of course, maintenance is a, a huge component that we want to consider to make sure that the transit stop stays looking nice with whatever we do decide to implement. Okay, I'm going to stay on this side for about 15 more seconds, and then we'll move on to the next slide. And if you have any thoughts about any of these, you know, of course, vote, but then, you know, send in the other thoughts or comments in the chat. I'm more than happy to have a dialogue about all of these elements with you. All right. So sound, um, a few different options. I guess one that's not on the screen, but if you're interested in it, please type it in the chat would be piped in sound. Um, but then these are just different scales of um, options that could be included. This is a you know a fairly large interactive uh, sound option. Um, this has multiples with these green uh, drums and these xylophones, and then more over here. And then, um, not trying to sway votes, but this little flower uh, you can hit the pedals and it, it makes sound. And then I've actually seen these installed throughout St. Louis, and they're um, they're they're pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave it on here for 30 more seconds and then we'll move to our shade slide. And again, just whatever picture you look at, whatever resonates with you, we just wanna get some gut reactions about the different elements as we move into this design process. Okay, so shade, uh, these are the same options that I showed in the slide discussing shade, but option one is thinking about shade from a natural component. So whether that be trees or um, depending on your size, maybe large bushes, anything like that. Option two shows that shade sail component, more of a traditional looking shade sail with different colors. And option three is just that unique design um, with the different crisscross patterns at the top. I'll leave it on here for about a minute um, and then we'll move on to our lighting slide. Okay, so um, lighting, there's a few options here. I'm sorry, this picture turned out a little bit blurry, but um, option one is more of like a hanging structure showing some lighting options. Option two is a little, uh, probably a little bit more manageable to maintain the string lighting. And then option three um, is just some decorative light poles. You can see of varying sizes uh, that make this unique arch shape. So again, whatever resonates with you, um, gut reaction, we'll leave it on this slide for about a minute and then we'll go to our next slide.
All right. So the next question is question six, landscaping and greenery. Option one speaks to the element of in the ground planted greenery. Option two, thinking about these planters um, with the different types of plants and the different types of shapes and just what that looks like. And then option three is these more wood planters with these um, trees. So again, your gut reaction, whatever speaks to you, leave it on the side about a minute. All right. So question seven, wayfinding and signage, um, you know, more colorful signage in terms of how you're getting there. So more branding type signage and then some more interesting structural type signage um, incorporating public art. We'll leave it on here about a minute and then we'll move on. Okay, um, unique station. Jackie, I was just gonna jump in for one moment. Um, when you were asking about wayfinding, we had a, a, a comment in the chat box about if you could go back one slide, you might wanna mention just a little bit about what the different wayfinding options are. So yeah. um, there was a question about how um, there wasn't really an understanding of how anything but number one is considered wayfinding. So I don't know if you wanna talk just a little bit about that before we move on, or you wanna address that at the end? Yeah, I can talk about that before we move on. Thanks, Kim, right. I didn't see that. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do wayfinding. I think um, in general, people think of traditional wayfinding as you know where the destination is and how you get there, but it's also utilizing unique signage to let people know that that's a place or that you've arrived in that place. Um, so the example here on option two, um, you know, it's just branding this depressed place as a space, letting people know that they've arrived there. Um, and then, you know, this could be coupled with other signs that might match those colors as you're trying to get there. Um, and then, you know, option three, this is just showing a nine, but it, is that a component of that building's address or is it something that's branded with the community as a place that you're going? So it's really thinking outside the box about ways to let people know they've arrived at a certain space. I hope that might clear up any, any confusion or we can, we can definitely discuss um, more at the end. I think that's super helpful. Thanks, Jackie. Yep. Okay, um, so moving on to station branding um, is, is question eight. I, see, I did see that come across in the chat um, and I have some thoughts on that, but let's go ahead and vote on station branding. And then maybe when we finish the poll, um, we'll continue this discussion on wayfinding. Um, so I'm gonna leave it on this slide for about a minute. But looking at ways to incorporate the branding and the benches or the bike racks or you know through signage, um, just 
anything that would call out the brand of the station and just your gut reaction. We'll leave it on here for about a minute. Okay, um, and then ground paint. So um, a couple options of just you know doing a unique pattern, but also utilizing it as another component in this option one. Option two um, is actually pictured from Emerson Park. It's more of a playful path that incorporates the music elements of the rest of the design. And then option three is just more of a decorative um, component that that takes over the whole place. So there's just some various ways to do different types of ground paint. And again, um, just picking whichever one speaks to you. We'll leave it on here for about a minute before we go to our final question. While people are voting, um, I did want to acknowledge the comment that Kathy and Deborah have both posted in the chat, and I look forward to this conversation that we're going to have um, after we answer our last visual survey preference question. And with that, we'll go to the last question: um, playful elements. So, any what type of item in terms of playful elements um, resonates with you? Um, whether that be something, you know, interactive, an activity that you do on the ground, like what's pictured in Maplewood, um, you know, option one is just a vertical element that provides a, a place for you to take your picture in front of, and then option three is more low scale, uh, more low hanging fruit, I guess, if you will, uh, opportunity. Okay, so, um, Mallory, if I click end poll, will I be able to see the results still? Do you know? I am not sure, but um, I know that I can send you a report about them. Okay. Oh, wait, Sheila, um, Sheila knows. So yeah, first off, everyone has to hit submit. So make sure you have that first. And then, yeah, then you'll end it and be able to get the results. Okay. Thank you, Sheila. We did get an extra um, answer in there. Appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. So now can everybody see the results? Yes. Okay. Um, so, and we'll go through and look at these um, afterwards as well, but I'm just going to pull the items back up. Um, it looks like, you know, pretty split on the seating options with the wood, wood one uh, winning out a little bit. Public art, it looks like a lot of people were interested in the mural, um, which is exciting. I, I think, you know, murals can be really fun. Um, sound, more people are interested in the, the little flower that we have, but again, pretty split. Um, shade, option three, one, fairly, fairly significantly. Um, that's another, that is a very fun looking shade sale. Option five, lighting was pretty split, but a lot of people like that string lighting. I know that's something that's interesting to a lot of people. Um, Landscaping and greenery, it looks like options two and three, those planter boxes, um, you know, they add a little bit more 
more space for color. Option seven, the wayfinding and signage um, looks like the, the what was you know described in the chat as a more traditional wayfinding followed by the structure. Option eight, um, station branding is split 50-50 between the, the overhead sign and the benches. We got a lot of compliments on the benches at Emerson Park. And the ground, ground paint is pretty much split between option two and three. With the playful elements, um, people it seems to really like the component at Maplewood. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing this and I we've already got some really lively discussion going on in the chat box. Um, so with that, we'll just go ahead and jump into these questions and comments. Um, the first one is getting back to what um, the traditional wayfinding and signage is. And someone you know, said, I think Deborah said, so would it just say Belleville Station? Um, you know, that's an option, but then there's an option to, you know, with the new arches from the logo representing the fountain, is there a way to incorporate those that make you feel like you've arrived at a place and like promoting the, that logo throughout the station is something. Um, on the slides that I showed the keeper of the plains, you know, those are all throughout downtown Wichita. So it might not be your traditional way finding, but it's something that when you see, you kind of know that you're in downtown because that's something that you see all throughout. Um, and that leads into the next component that I saw Kathy wrote. She wrote, with the trail connecting us all the way to Edwardsville via O'Fallon, et cetera, we are anticipating many bikers coming into the area. And with the station being located at the downtown entertainment district, it would be nice for them to visually understand they have arrived in an area that has been used for them to visit. Bike Walk Belleville is advocating for a protected bike lane from this area into the downtown business district. Um, Kathy, I'd be interested in hearing more about that initiative going on, but yes, this is exactly the type of things that we're thinking of is what can, you know, let everybody know, people that are biking, walking, using transit, know that they've arrived at a space and that proximity to downtown Belleville is super important. Does anybody else have anything they want to add on that? Okay. Um, Kathy, I also see that you put downtown is known for its live music. So anything depicting musical elements would be great. Also good to know. I know Kim has responded. Erica asked, is it possible for the ground paint to be more interactive, similar to a sensory path or challenge course to promote physical activity while at the transit center? Um, I love that idea. And I think it's a, a good comment for us to take back to the design process. And the answer is yes. Um, Use, utilizing ground paint to promote physical activity is definitely something that we've seen, um, especially in, in play spaces. Someone asked, would it be impossible to incorporate bike rentals? Um, that, you know, that might be out of the scope of our team, but I think it's conversations that could continue to be had, especially with St. Clair County Transit District, just operating the flyer, looking at what other micro mobility services are out there for people to utilize, um, you know, thinking of things like bike shares or scooter rentals is definitely um, something for the future. Um, and then Deborah put, I'm concerned about disability issues. Ensure that the floor paint isn't distracting for those with low vision. Um, accessibility issues is something that we are, we definitely do take into consideration, especially, um, our designers, but then also having AARP on the team. Um, that it's something that we're always considering as we, we look at all of these elements, but I do appreciate that comment and we will continue to make sure we think about it throughout the entire project. Kathy wrote also Belleville Mural Project. Bell, Belleville Mural Project has installed eight murals in downtown area. So we currently have many selfie areas installed. Um, and Belleville Mural Project is currently seeking buildings backing up to the trail to include in their 2022 installation. So that is exciting to know. Um, and then someone said to look at this, Deborah said to look at the St. Vincent Greenway Trailhead um, and Trojan Park for inclusive activity, activities and abilities. We will take a look at that. I know that project is a nationally award-winning um, park. So it will definitely be good to consider elements that they were able to incorporate. And Deborah, we do hear what you're saying, and 
you know, because one is older does not mean they have a disability. However, we are looking at, um, when, we, when we look at the site, we consider all people using the site um, and recognize that um, we need to look at people with all different levels of ability. So we encourage you to continue to provide um, input during the process. So Jackie, I think I think this has been robust chat conversation, which I know we apologize. When you have a webinar, you're very limited to having chat conversations versus face-to-face -face conversations. But I do want to let people know that we will have our on-the-ground community engagement team at the station several more times over the next couple of weeks. So you do have an opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with our community engagement team. They will be at the station. Marianne, I don't know if you'd like to jump in really quickly and let people know what days you will be there if they wanted to meet directly with you and provide additional commentary. I think that that is a great option for people who are at the station on a regular basis. Otherwise, you can give us a call or shoot us an email with any other ideas you may have um, because these are some really great ideas and we want to make sure we capture as much community input as possible around this project. And, and this project is going to have multiple different elements, just like Emerson Park. So we've seen some commentary on the on the paint on the ground. We had a mural at Emerson Park. You know, we had seating at Emerson Park and shade. So there's all different elements of this project that we're going to be considering. And I know Jackie and her team are really interested to hear what residents and writers alike are interested in seeing at the station. So please weigh in outside of this design workshop and make sure you let us know all of the things that you're interested in seeing. And those will all be incorporated in the, you know, our conversations around the vision that comes out of this initial community engagement. And I did put my email in the chat box, so please feel free to email me any additional comments. If you just want to have a conversation about this, I'd be more than happy to schedule a call with you. Um, like Kim mentioned, it's really challenging to do these virtually, but we will be out at the transit stop several more times, um, including Friday. We, Friday, be, yes, yep. absolutely. That's what I was going to say. Our next stop, stop time outside um, at the station would be Friday, um, November 12th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm from one to two to one, one to three. three one, one to three. three from one to three o'clock at the station mm -hmm. um my, i put my email in the chat it's up above it's just j knight k-n-i-g-h-t at cbb traffic.com um but if you have any questions more than more than welcome to email me. And then also CMT's website um, has a lot of information about the project. Um, with that, we have it timed almost exactly to an hour. <laughs> um, so any other clo closing thoughts? And then, um, you know, everybody's free to go. We just hope to see you at our future engagement opportunities. Um, like Kim mentioned, this was some great conversation and, and we're so grateful for your participation. Thank you. Thank you everyone who attended on behalf of CMT, AARP, the St. Clair County Transit District and Metro Transit. We really do appreciate your time. We know even an hour on Zoom can be painful. So we really, really do appreciate you sticking with us. We want to hear your comments and we want to engage you, your friends, your colleagues, your family as much as possible throughout this process. Because when we leave, we wanna make sure that the residents and riders who use the Belleville Transit Center love what they have there want to be there and want to share how great it is when you transform a station with other stakeholders in St. Clair County. So maybe we can do future stops. So thank you everyone for your time today. And um, I think that's it. And I would ask the panelists to hang on for one minute as we end this meeting. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
So according to what I have, um, Mallory, can we stop recording? No, we're not. I didn't put it on the last slide because I saw you're thinking about the logo, Kim. That was a oversight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I noticed that halfway through, but. Again